Hybel's ban in California moves one step closer to an evil reality. Hold that thought. Quick question. Is your family ready if disaster strikes, earthquakes, hurricanes, grid failure, or the Middle East war spiraling out of control? These are real threats. So do not be caught off guard when disaster strikes. Get the survival food I trust for my family at preparewithgary.com. Now, back to the news. Randy DeSoto for the Western Journal reports that a new California pro-LGBTQ bill that would ban the sale or distribution of materials related to, quote, conversion therapy easily passed the state assembly on Thursday. CBS News affiliate KOVR reported the final tally was 50 to 14. Assembly Bill 2943 now heads to the Democrat-controlled Senate. Now, the bill would make it unlawful an unlawful business practice to engage in any transaction intended to result or that results in the sale or lease of goods or services to any consumer aimed at sexual orientation change efforts with an individual. Goods would include any books or written materials, while services would encompass counseling individuals seeking to address same-sex attractions. According to the Los Angeles Times, quote, one key part of the debate centers on whether Assembly Bill 2943 would stretch beyond businesses that charge for conversion programs and extend to printed documents, including Bibles. The Bible. All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Rakakodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to all the Akim out there pushing the word of sincerity and in truth. Yeah, and there you have it. You know, steps closer to, of course, the Bible being banned in California and really the Bible being banned all over. All right. Because it is going to be a famine of the word. It's going to be a famine and a scarcity of hearing the, the uh, words of Yahweh by Shimei Awashah. And that's why it tells you when the scriptures seek you the Lord while he may be found. And you see the primary ones that's actually pushing this agenda is the LGBTQ, RSTUV, whatever the hell, you know, community. Those homosexuals and also these politicians, these uh, representatives, they are fed up with the Bible, all right, because they're fed up with the prophets of the Lord actually going in details and the specifics and condemning this devil with this word, all right. Starting off, of course, they're in California, so they seen they know the brothers that actually teach in California, you know, Great Millstone, California, Great Millstone, New York, and that's how we know without a shadow of a doubt. That, uh, you know, the Bible is going to actually get sp sp the uh, Bible banning is going to spread throughout because California is a large state. All right. And, and California with a lot of trends start in California. A lot of things uh, originate in California and they spread throughout, you know, such as, uh, of course, one of the major things that California is known for is the gang activity and see how that sprouted out from just, um, you know, the Crips and the Bloods. And how it spread all throughout the United States like wildfire. All right, same thing with California is also known through uh, the mass amount of agriculture, the produce that they actually, uh, it comes out of California, it spreads all throughout America. So this California ban is going to spread like like wildfire. All right, it's going to touch all these different uh, states and these different uh, states are going to get inspired by the fact of banning the scriptures. And that's going to be it, man. That's going to be the prophecy coming to pass in Isaiah, the 55th chapter. All right. Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Right. So the Lord said, seek him while he may be found, implying that it is going to be a time that you are going to try to find him and he won't be there. That's why it says call ye upon him while he is near, because the Lord is going to draw back his hand. All right. And the Lord has his men. It's constantly going to the highways and byways, pushing this energy, you know, telling our, our people this is the way, walk ye in it. And like I said, the, the uh, Israelites don't want to walk there. Two thirds of our people don't want to hear the word. So it's going to be a famine of the word. And when that famine of the word actually uh, push gets pushed out, it's going to be martial law. It's going to be uh, uh, chaos like this individual speaking about that, too. You know, when it's going to be all kind of mass disasters, are you are you people prepared? And majority of these people are not prepared. They're, they're living these days just like how they were in Egypt or just like they was in, uh, uh, you know, Babylon. And, and like it says, during the time of Noah, you know, eating, drinking, marrying, giving into marriage until the flood came. So our people are going to be caught with their pants down, but they're going to want to hear and they're going to want to actually grab the skirt 
and grab hold of a man that actually has this understanding, men and women. All right. That's why it says this, uh, of course, Isaiah, the fourth chapter, Isaiah, the third chapter, how these women are going to be desolate and on the ground and they're going to look to cleave unto a man. All right. Tells you in the fourth chapter how seven women are going to cleave onto that one man because because the most high is going to make a man more precious than a golden wedge or offer. As it is written in Isaiah the thirteenth chapter, so, so we see these these prophecies blooming and coming in their full life, in, in full life, so to speak. They're manifesting physically. All right, the prophets, the men of the Lord, get the inspiration from Yahweh by Shemal Shah. We push it on the corners. We tell the judgment. We tell the prophecies, and we we step back, so to speak, and watch all the uh, prophecies actually uh, unfold. All right, this is uh, Amos eight and eleven. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So the Lord is actually putting the spirit on these individuals to actually push a vibration to ban his word because the Lord, the Lord is fed up, man. He's tired. It tells you in Nahum how the Lord is angry and furious. He's pissed off and he doesn't he's not going to keep allowing uh, the, the men of the Lord to be you know, ridicule, you know, basically looked down upon, you know, and, and, and basically spit on scorn and, and, and buffeted and things of that nature, you know, says that his men, men of the Lord would not be removed into a corner anymore. So the Lord is going to draw back his hand and he's going to push the hand of judgment. All right. And the ones that don't want to hear, they're going to actually be destroyed. All right. And, and a lot of people are going to want to hear, but it's going to be a little too late. All right. Psalms 110 and 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Right. So a lot of our people are going to be willing to hear the word when they see chaos and, and martial law and widespread chaotic, uh, chaotic events and pandemonium spread throughout these streets. So I want to end it by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shabbat, Shem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom Amakim.